Act 1, Scene 3 of Romeo and Juliet, No Fear Shakespeare, on page 53. Act 1, Scene 3, Lady Capulet and the Nurse Enter. Um, before we start this, I'm going to explain to you a little bit about what the nurse actually is. She's not um, like an RN that we would know of today. What a nurse was during this time was more like, um, like a nanny. Um, just like now, when you have extravagantly wealthy people, they are going to usually hire someone um, to take care of their children for them. And during this time, there was no such thing as like formula to feed your babies. So what they would do, because um, obviously they're too rich and lavish to bother getting up in the middle of the night and breastfeeding their own child. So they would hire um, someone who... Um, had a baby that passed away or um, something like that, you know, during this time, if a child was born with some kind of condition um, or if it even just got a cold as an infant, it was most likely going to die. They obviously didn't have the medical advances that we do today. There was no such thing as an NICU. Um, <clears throat> so if your baby got sick, it was, it was most likely going to die. But just because a woman's uh, baby dies at birth or uh, after, you know, a few months after they're born, doesn't mean that the, the woman's body is going to quit automatically producing b breast milk. So these rich uh, people, these women would hire a, what they called a wet nurse. And this is um, someone that would have a child that passed away and um or maybe the child was even still living but they needed extra money so they would um breastfeed the other child for um you know like for the for the rich people kind of like now if you have a nanny um you're gonna have you know either formula or you can pump the breast milk and put it in the refrigerator and the nanny can feed the baby and you won't have to be bothered with it if you're rich like that. Um, and that's the case here. Lady Capulet's way too rich to deal with things such as children. So she hired the, uh, the, the nurse. Uh, it's never stated what the nurse's name is. <clears throat> she simply called nurse. So Lady Capulet enters, and she says, Nurse, where's my daughter? Tell her to come to me. I swear to you by my virginity at age 12, I already told her to come. Come on, where is she? What is she doing? What, Juliet? Juliet enters. What is it? Who's calling me? Your mother. Madam, I am here. What do you want? Lady Capulet says, I'll tell you what's the matter. Nurse, Leave us alone for a little while. We must talk privately. Nurse, come back here. I just remembered. You can listen to our secrets. You know how young my daughter is. Um, this kind of tells us a little bit about the relationship between Juliet and her mother. Um, the mother wants to talk with Juliet privately, but she quickly remembers that... She doesn't really know Juliet that well. She hasn't really raised her. The nurse has. So she brings the nurse back in sort of to kind of help her break the news. Yes, I know her age. Down to the hour. She's not even 14. I bet my 14, uh, I'm sorry, I bet 14 of my own teeth. But I'm sorry to say I only have four teeth. She's not 14. How long is it until Lama's tied? Two weeks and a few days. Now, this would have been funny. It still is funny. The nurse, she's kind of like that lady that you, you know, maybe that that great aunt or someone that you see at church that every time you get around them, they start bringing up embarrassing stuff when you were a kid and they just won't shut up. She, you know, she's she's that character. She says more than what she really should. She, you know, she babbles and babbles, and that's what she's doing now. And so she says, I bet 14 of my teeth, even though I only have four, she's not 14 yet. 
Um, and obviously this, there was no dental care during this time. And so, you know, this would have been hilarious. The nurse goes on to say, whether it's even or odd, all of the days in the year on the night of Lamas Eve, she'll be 14. She and Susan, God rest her and all Christian souls, were born on the same day. Well, Susan died and is with the Lord or with God. She was too good for me, but like I said, on this night of Lamas Eve, she will be 14. So the nurse is explaining how she knows Juliet's birth date so well because her own daughter susan who we can see died as an infant um had the same exact birthday as juliet and so it's easy for her to remember yes she will indeed i remember it well it's been 11 years since the earthquake she stopped nursing from my breast on that very day i'll never forget it I put bitter wormwood on my breast, and it was sitting in the sun under the wall of the dove house. You and your husband were in Mantua. Boy, do I have some memory. But like I said, when she tasted the bitter wormwood on my nipple, the pretty little babe got irritated and started to quarrel with my breast. Then the dove house shook and the earthquake. There was no need to tell me to get out of there. That was 11 years ago. By then, she could stand up all by herself. No, I swear by the time she could run and waddle all around, I remember because she had cut her forehead. So she's just, you know, going back, telling some stories of when Juliet was a little kid. Um, I'm sorry, I lost my place. So she says, no, I swear by that time she could run and waddle all around. I remember because she had cut her forehead just the day before. My husband, God rest his soul. He was a happy man. Picked up the child. Oh, he said, did you fall on your face? You'll fall on backward when you grow smarter, won't you, Jewel? And I swear the poor pretty thing stopped crying and said, yes. Oh, to watch that joke come true. I bet if I live a thousand years, I'll never forget it. Won't you, Jewel? He said. And the pretty fool stopped crying and said yes. Now, this would have been wildly hilarious and everyone, whether rich or poor, would have laughed and laughed. This is kind of more of a, a Medea inappropriate type thing here. Um, did you find it? She says that her husband picked up Jewel when she first started walking. We can, if it's 11 years ago, she was about two, close to three. She's just starting to run everywhere and she fell and she hit her head and she cut it. And um, the nurse's husband, who's now deceased, said to Julie, uh, I'm sorry, Juliet, says, uh, well, you fell on your face now, but when you get older, you'll fall on your back, basically saying right now you're so cute and innocent, but one day you're going to be older and you're going to be laying on your back. And he's referring to sex. Um, and so, yeah, this would have been just extremely hilarious. Lady Capulet says, enough of enough of this. Please be quiet. The nurse Yes, madam, but I can't help laughing to think that the baby stopped crying and said yes. I swear she had a bump on her forehead as big as a rooster's testicle. It was a painful bruise, and she was crying bitterly. Yes, said my husband. Did you fall on your face? You'll fall backward when you grow up, won't you, Jewel? And she stopped crying and said yes. Now you stop too, nurse, please. Peace. I'm done talking. God choose you to receive his grace. You are the prettiest baby I ever nursed. I live to see you getting married someday. All my wishes will come true. Lady Capulet butts in and says, Well, marriage is exactly what I have to discuss. Tell me, my daughter Juliet, what is your attitude about getting married? It is an honor I do not dream of. An honor? If I weren't your only nurse, I'd say you had sucked wisdom from my breast that fed you. 
So Juliet's like, I mean, I don't, I don't really care about marriage. And the nurse butts in with another funny thing. It's like, you got that from me. <laughs> well, start thinking about marriage now. Here in Verona, there are girls younger than you, girls from noble families who've already become mothers. By my count, I was already your mother at just about your age while you remain a virgin. Well then, I'll say this quickly, the valiant Paris wants you as his bride. So we see now how old Juliet's mom even is. If she was 12 or 13 when she had Juliet, then she can't be older than 30, you know. The nurse says, what a man, young lady. He's a great man as any in the whole world. He's as perfect as if he were sculpted from wax. Summertime in Verona has no flower as fine as him. No, he's a fine flower, truly a flower. So they're talking about how good looking Paris is and, you know, how he's, he's a good prospect for a husband lady capulet looks to juliet what do you say can you love this gentleman tonight you'll see him at our feast study paris's face and find pleasure in his beauty examine every line of his features and see how they work together uh, to make him handsome if you are confused just look into his eyes the man is single and he acts only a bride to make him perfect and complete as is right, fish live in the sea, and is wrong for a beauty like you to hide from a handsome man like him. Many people think he's handsome, and whoever becomes his bride will be just as admired. You would share all that he possesses, and by having him, you would lose nothing. Lose nothing? In fact, you'd get bigger. Men make women bigger when they get them pregnant would have also you know we see all this humor especially when the nurse is around she's um extremely you know humorous and she brings forth all this witty uh yet inappropriate banter give us a quick answer can you accept paris's love i look at him and try to like him at least if what i see is likable but i won't let myself fall for him any more than your permission allows Peter enters. Madam, the guests are here. Dinner is served. People are calling for you. People have asked for Juliet. And in the pantry, people are cursing the nurse. Everything's out of control. I must go and serve the guests. Please follow straight after me. We'll follow you. Juliet, the count is waiting for you. Go, girl. Go, girl. Look for a man. He'll give you happy nights at the end of happy days. 